All right, I'm on hole number nine of the Silver State Tournament. I'm in Monday's qualifying round of the Ricky Division. Let's go to Golf Clash Notebook and check out hole number nine. And I don't care. This hole is brutal. This is a birdie hole with an eagle opportunity. This is not like the other par fives that are in this game. This this hole right here is is most holes your most of these par fives in golf class you're looking for Alvy. You have an Al, you're looking for the Alvy shot. And this is not one of those holes. This hole is you're looking for the eagle shot, but birdie is the is the one and it's tricky every step of the way. So the goal number one is to get out here as far as we can on the drive. And With these lower level stuff, like normally your normal shot if you're doing the layup is you're trying to get out of this area and then you're going to end up on this pad and then you're going from here to get on with a long iron. If you're really trying to go for it, you bring out a big power ball. If you've got upper developed clubs, you bring a big power ball and you try and get past this range with like a five power ball and get way up in here so that you can try and go from here on the back side of this to actually try and get up in two with a big dog. The problem with this shot is, is that, and this is what they did the last time this was in a tournament. We had like a four, four mile an hour wind all week long and you were able to get over here. And then on the weekend round, they gave us a two mile an hour wind and you couldn't quite get there. So this hole is just very, very tricky. And, and the deal is, is that if you get out here in the perfect spot and you get here in the perfect spot, getting onto the green is tough. Every step of the way, this is a tough shot. So like, what do you bring? Do I bring my extra mile to get out here and then I bring a big dog to try and get me further up in here or do I bring something more accurate where I can lay up in front of the sand and then go at it with an accurate long iron and I think that's the way I'm going to do it I'm going to try and I'm not going to play this hole safe but it's all dependent on that drive you've got to get that drive down in that hole as far as you can and I'm going to bring the that. Mm, it's all about that wood. I really don't have a bunch of wood choices. You know, when you think about wood, I've got uh, my wood choices are grim. The Guardian's not going to cut it. You need something with a little bit of topspin to get you to where you want to go. The Horizon, well, it has some topspin. The big dog's just you know right there at it. <laughs> and I definitely don't like the accuracy of that. Uh, that horizon. So I'm going to bring my big dog just in case I short shoot this shot here, it can help me. I'm going to tighten, bring all that stuff right there. That's what I'm bringing. Let's open up that pin chest. Off we go. Here we go. My big tapa is very inaccurate. <clears throat> and I wrote down numbers for all my clubs except for the big top. No, there's a big topper. It's 2.7 per ring. And you can overdrive down into this pocket. So I'm going to let the wind carry me. There's 2.7. I'm going to let the wind carry me. So I'm going to leave the wind in. And I'm going to put on all the top spin. The wind's pushing me forward. So I'm going to go out into that area. I'm going to put just a little bit of curl on it. Hitting great to the left, <clears throat> which took out all that curl. I'm just trying to scoop myself up in there. a little bit on the table down there but no sense in pushing the limit down here at this it curls down where the fairway goes like this and then it rolls down a little bit right there at the very end and it'll carry so if you get too close to that end it'll carry just a little bit too far and you'll end up clipping that rough and you do not you do not want to get caught up in the rough down here on this first shot 
This is definitely a one shot at a time, and we got three shots just to get up to the green. Short shooting it there. You can recover from that, so don't get too don't get too upset. You can recover from that. All right. I left a little bit of distance on the table. I don't need to get far because I can't. If I could have got over here, I could I could maybe go for something a little bit, but I didn't. So two five, that's about a ring and a half. But just a little toss in, I want to stay out of that sand. Hitting it great to the right, about 70 rings. Which is gonna put me clip in the rough, but still in the fairway. The old way that we used to play it is see this indentation up here on this area? This is where we used to have to hit to. We used to never play at all on the right hand side. We played everything here on the left. They completely reconfigured this hole. But this little fairway area right here and this little curvature, this is about the only thing that's like it was on the original hole until you get up by the green. The green's the same and this fairway pad right in front of the green's the same. But we used to hit over to that side over there. So if I was in my opponent's position, I've got enough. I've played so many times from that side before they changed the hole that I, I might hit over to that other side just because I'm familiar with what that, what that looks like. Let's see where our max club, there's max backbone. There's minimum. So right here is about mid backbone and that's 2.2 .2 per ring. Go right at it. So 2.2, it's about a ring and a half. Hit it great to the left. Eke it up towards the hole. This is a hole right here that you definitely want to check out where you're at. I see a lot of people, what they do is they make a full wind adjustment right there. And they're not in they're not in max club. So like right there, a full wind adjustment would have been 1.5 per ring, and there's a good chance that I would have got caught up in that rough. And so you need to know your numbers for your long iron. And I play my long iron, I figure out the max number on uh, my backbone right there, it's 1.5 per ring. And then I take 1.5 and I times it by 1.5 and that gives me my mid number and then I take my max number and I times it by 1.75 and that gives me my minimum or my minimum number but you need to know where you're at in your club if you're doing the wind ring method you need to learn your long iron and short iron numbers you need to have those written down you need to have them all written down because it can make a difference with your woods as well so woods I play the max number, then the max number times 1.25, that's mid. And then the max number times 1.5, that gives me my minimum. But this is a tough hole to get a birdie on. It can be very difficult to get a birdie on, and it's very difficult to get an eagle. You're going to see a lot of people come to this hole and end up with pars and bogeys. And there's going to be maybe just a handful of people that end up getting an eagle. So walking away from here with a birdie is not going to be the end of the world. That's not that's the goal, is to get that birdie. Give yourself a look at it. I had a look at eagle right there, but that's about as good as it gets. All right, so that was the qualifying round for the rookie division. I picked up a, I picked up two of the par fours, picked up a whole shot on hole number eight, and I picked up a shot on hole number one. Hole number five is the one that I really, I really want to start dialing in because I do believe that on all three of the par fours, even if you got lower developed stuff, you have an opportunity to pick those up. 
So if the minus 11 is the minimum score and, and you could pick all three of those up, you're looking at minus 14. That's a minus 28. That's a pretty stout round. And that's going to place you really high in the, in the weekend. But I think the minus 11 on this course is still going to get you with when you're talking about, you know, where we'll fall on the weekend round. In most of the rookie brackets, that minus 11 is still going to probably net you a top 20. But this tournament is going to be wild on the weekend. So where normally that, that minimum score would net you top 20, top 15, this particular tournament, it's going to be really important that we try and pick up a shot here and there because we need we need those shots to, to keep us in that top 15, top 20. All right, that was the qualifying round of the Silver State Tournament. Thanks for watching.